Hello once again out there. This is Salma Edgar. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary broadcasting from St. Charles, Missouri in the United States. And I'm married to Norman. This is my name right here, Salma Edgar. And Norman and I come on Periscope just for one reason, and that is to tell the world about Jesus Christ, that He alone is the Savior of the world, and that it is only through Jesus, through faith in Jesus, that a person may become spiritually born again, and then be able to know that you can go to heaven when you die. We also have um, a website that is called howtobecomeachristiantoday.com and also you can reach us through this, mongnews.org. It is also another avenue to our website and additionally we have just launched an internet radio station it's called God Spokesman Internet Radio Station, and you can come to our radio station through here, mongnews.org. We are on 24-7, and you can hear um, books of the Bible being played. You can hear gospel music. You can hear my comments on the books of the Bible, which I'm still working on. And also from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, Monday through Friday, Central Standard Time in the United States, Norman is broadcasting live. And uh, so that's what he is doing at this time. So, mongnews.org. That's where you can find us, and that's where you can tune in to our new internet radio station, God Spokesman. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, you can email Norman here at questions at mongnews.org. Nice. So, are you still on? Yes. Okay. Yeah, everything's working fine. Wonderful. Hi so, there. How are you? <laughs> that's my honey there, Norman. <laughs> Came into my office. I've got my office here where I broadcast from. He has his office on the other side. And tell him, did you tell and, him I'm broadcasting? Yeah. On the radio? Yeah, no. I just told the whole thing. Okay. He just came in here to get something. He uh, has the broadcast room in the next room and uh, today I will only be on about a half hour because I have an appointment to go to but um, as always I'm talking about Jesus and the way of salvation and there are so many religions of the world that are false religions that will only lead people to hell because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. So Jesus is saying he is the way to heaven. He is the truth, and he is the life giver. And that is meaning eternal life. It can only be obtained through faith in Jesus Christ's atonement on the cross. Not only are there many false religions that don't even talk about faith in Jesus, but unfortunately there are also many Protestant denominations who say they are Christians, who say they believe in Jesus' death on the cross. Millions of people who say they are Christians, but in reality, they are only religious. They've not been spiritually born again. 
And I know from personal experience, because I used to be one of those people, I am now 69 years old, and at the age of 50 is when I was spiritually born again. And for several years before that, I was going to churches. I went to various churches, and, and I read the Bible, and I b truly believed that I was a Christian. But I had never heard the message of salvation through Jesus Christ alone. I had never heard that you have to be born again and that it is by God's grace. And so, I'm going to talk briefly this morning on the subject, how do you know if you are really a Christian? And it is explained, hello there Motox, welcome. It is explained in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament. And welcome. And as a Protestant Christian missionary, Ty, good to see you, Ty. And Charles, welcome. Good to see you. The Protestant Christian Bible is the only truly inspired word of God to all mankind. There's many other Bibles, many other religious books, but they do not contain the truth from God. They do not tell people that they have to be born again through faith in Jesus Christ. Those books, the, all those other religious books are false. They're lies from the devil. It's only in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament, that we learn what it means to be a Christian, what, it, what God's requirement is in order to go to heaven. And so I'm going to just share a few scriptures on that topic in... Uh, John chapter 8 verse 31 Jesus says if you continue in my word then are you my disciples indeed to be a disciple means to be a follower a believer and I looked up the word continue in Strong's concordance to see what the original meaning was in the Greek because the Protestant Christian Bible was translated from Greek into English in 1500 AD. And so this is our current English Bible, is, is the Protestant Bible. And the word continue from the Greek means to stay, to abide, to dwell, to remain. So Jesus said, if, uh, if, as Ben said, if is a very tiny word, but it has a very significant meaning. If you continue in my word, that means if you stay in my word, if you abide in in my word, if you dwell in my word, if you remain in my word. So Jesus is saying, if you continue always to remain, to stay in my word, the, and abide and dwell both means to live. If you live by the teachings of Jesus, if you always remain in his word and in the whole of God's word in the New Testament, and that is the teachings of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists, if you continue in my word, he said, then are you my disciples. So that is one of the qualifications of being a true follower of Jesus is that you always live by God's word, 
in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. That means that you are obedient to what God says in his word. You're obedient to the teachings of Jesus and the apostles and evangelists. We can't just pick out the things that we think are easy to obey, but we have to obey all of what God says in order to be a true Christian. And then in the 14th chapter of John, verse 15, Jesus said, if, again, there's that little word, if you love me, keep my commandments. So that is a proof, that's how we prove if we love Jesus, is by keeping his commandments. And here in the New Testament, the word commandments means the whole of Jesus' teaching. It's not talking about the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament because when we are spiritually born again, we live only by the New Testament. Those Ten Commandments in the Old Testament was under the law. That was for the people who lived during that time. And it actually says in the New Testament that if you love God, it says love is the fulfilling of the law. And Jesus said further in Matthew 22, verses 37 to 39, he said, someone asked him what, what is the most important commandments, and he said, the greatest commandments, number one, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So, hello there, welcome. So, God is saying that if you, well, hello, Russia, it's wonderful to have you on. I am a Protestant Christian missionary. Hello there, dark effing night. This is my name right here, Selma Edker, and I'm a Protestant Christian missionary talking about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And Jesus said, the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor. Well, who is your neighbor? That simply means all people. And if you love God with all your heart and you love other people, you're not going to harm other people. And therefore, love is the fulfilling of those Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. When you walk in love, well, I'm not sure exactly how to answer that except to say this everyone must be spiritually born again in order to go to heaven that's what Jesus said so it's not about how we feel about other people's sins Jesus died on the cross for the sins of all mankind but that doesn't mean that automatically everyone gets to go to heaven. Every person has to choose for themselves to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior or to reject Jesus. And it's only those who are spiritually born again accepting Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, they are the only ones who go to heaven and everybody else goes to hell. 
So, as a born-again believer, when, when we become born again, the Bible says the love of God is shed into our hearts. And so it, it is that love and compassion of God in my heart and for everyone who's been born again that compels us to share this gospel message with other people. So I guess I would say in answer to your question, no, we're not to accept the sins of other people because sin is wrong. Sin has to be punished. And that's what happens when people die if they've never turned to Jesus in repentance and asked forgiveness and accepted Him as the Lord and Savior, then they will go to hell. But the good news is God forgives sins. The, the Bible says hell is a literal place. It is a literal place. It's a lake of fire, a place of eternal torment. And it's for eternity. When a person dies, it's too late to change your mind. You have to make that decision before you die, either to accept Jesus or reject Jesus. And I always say that there, are, I believe there are many people who choose not to think about it, try to ignore it, but in doing that, by default, you're actually choosing hell. Because you have to make a conscious decision to surrender yourself to the Lordship of Jesus Christ by being spiritually born again. So, in, um, in the book of Romans chapter 5, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Hello there, welcome. So we are justified only by faith in Jesus' atonement on the cross. And this verse 1 says, We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ when we have been born again. Okay. Um, all right. You know, there are many people... Uh, maybe you didn't hear me say this earlier, but there are many people who believe they are Christians who in fact are not. And I used to be one of those people. For several years I went to church and I read the Bible and I thought I was a Christian. But I had never been spiritually born again. And that is true of countless people. They think they're Christians just because they go to church. Hello, Russia. Welcome. So, when people who say they are Christians but have not been born again, they are just religious people and they are not living by the Word of God in the New Testament. They're not being obedient to Jesus, and that is when things don't add up. When you're born again, you, you walk in the love of God and you live by His Word. As a true born-again Christian, your life needs to line up with God's Word. Well, <laughs> you know, I think you're the second person that 
has asked me that. The thing is, God gives everyone free will. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not God. And so, yes, God is all-knowing. But the thing is, Lucifer did not have to rebel. He could have continued to be obedient to God, just like Adam and Eve. They could have been obedient to God. And it's the same thing today. God allows everyone free choice. Yes, yes, I understand. And yes, and I appreciate your asking. Um, because that's why I'm here. But, you know, and I'm not making light of your questions at all. But, just like Lucifer rebelled and Adam and Eve rebelled, the majority of people today are rebelling against God by refusing to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And for countless people, they don't even want to hear about Jesus. And therefore, they will go to hell. But God loves everyone so much, that's why Jesus came, and it is only by faith in Jesus, by turning to Jesus, by becoming spiritually born again, that we are then set free from the sin nature, and then we are we are justified before God and we are able to go to heaven when we die. That is the whole reason why Jesus came. It's because of the immeasurable love of God. Well, no, I can't agree with that. Truly, there are as many things about the world as backwards. But God... God has not left us. It's, the thing is that people have left God. And if a person is truly sincere about wanting to know God, about wanting to know about Jesus, about wanting to become a child of God, about wanting to repent and be born again, God will reveal himself to you. And it is, that's the reason why I'm here on Periscope, is to share with the people of the world what it means to be born again, why you must be born again, and how you can be born again. And it is the most important message you'll ever hear. It is the most important decision you'll ever make in your life because you alone choose your eternal destiny, either heaven or hell. God does seem far away when you don't know Him, but you can change that. You can call out to God and say, God, reveal yourself to me I want to know you and read the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament for yourself. Read the words of Jesus. Read it for yourself. Jesus said you must repent and you must be born again. Okay, read the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. And if you sincerely want to be born again, the Bible says it is by the grace of God. Ephesians 2.8, it is by grace you are saved through faith, and this not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So God's grace is his love for you. It's his favor towards you. God doesn't want you to be 
alone, feeling alone, like he is nowhere to be found because God's grace is right there with you now. If you are sincere, God's grace is wooing you to turn to him. And it's, you have to humble yourself and by faith believe that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of all mankind. Jesus shed his sinless blood on the cross as the punishment for our sins. It's called the atonement. Jesus died in our place so that we don't have to be punished individually for our sins. Jesus took the wrath of God upon himself. So it is by faith that we have to believe in the atonement of Jesus. And God's grace helps us to understand that. God is a spiritual substance, and within the spiritual substance is three persons. It's, it is the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So if you truly want to be born again, you humbly turn to God and you say, God, I'm so sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. And I believe by faith that Jesus died in my place on the cross, that he took my punishment. And then you have to repent. And that's the important thing that people don't understand. Repentance is more than just saying you're sorry. Repentance is then agreeing, humbly agreeing, sincerely agreeing, that you will obey the teachings of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. It is an actual surrender of yourself unto the Lordship of Jesus Christ and saying, God, I will live for you, I will obey you, I will serve you. And when you say that sincere prayer to the Lord, I have, certainly I've read the Old Testament um, more times than once, but it is only a history. It's an important history, but it's history. And it tells about mankind up until the time that Jesus was born. So the Old Testament, we, we need to know it, what it says, but we don't live by it. When we're born again, we live only by the New Testament. The new replaces the old, so far as how we are to live and what the Word of God says to us for today. And so, when a person turns in repentance and wants to be born again, it is a supernatural transformation by the Holy Spirit of God. It's not it can't be, happen just by saying, I believe in Jesus. But you have to actually humbly surrender yourself. And when you do, the Bible says you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. It's actually like you're a new person. And the love of God then enters into your heart, the Bible says. And the old person passes away and it's like you're a brand new person that's what it means to be born again hello there Ivan so it is um, as Jesus said and maybe you didn't hear this part earlier Jesus said if you continue in my word then are you my disciples indeed so to be a follower of Jesus, to be a true Christian, 
means that we live by the Word of God in the New Testament alone. That is a, a measure of a person who's a true Christian. Also, Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love other people. And that is, you can do it not in yourself, but it's because God's love is shed into our hearts when we are born again. That's what the Bible says. That is the transformation that takes place. It's a real thing. And you actually are a different person than you were before. So that, that's how you know that you've been born again. It, it's, it's an actual transformation. You can tell there's a difference. So, again, it is, it is so important. And my friend out there who's been chatting with me, I sincerely hope that you will make that decision for yourself, that you will become a follower of Jesus, that you will make that all-important decision to be born again. God loves you. You might feel like He's far away, but He loves you. He loves every person and He wants you to go to heaven, and I do too. Well, my friend, um, I hope perhaps that you will replay this and, um, and just seriously consider it. I love you with the love of God, and so does my husband, and he's hey, right here. Amen. You are welcome, my friend. Uh, I mean it with my whole heart. I love you with the love of God, and God wants you to be born again so that you can be in heaven with Him when you die. So, I have to go. I have an appointment this morning. Um, this is Wednesday. I will be back on Sunday at 11 o'clock. And uh, my husband, Norman is he's on every morning uh it comes on about 8 30 this is nine o'clock but about 8 30 and this is his periscope uh title and um he would be happy to talk with you also and uh i'm on the radio now too just taking a break yeah and we are also um just briefly because i gotta go but you can contact us, mongnews.org. We have a new radio station, God Spokesman, that has just come on air. And you can contact us if you want to personally at questions at mongnews.org. So just know that you are loved. And okay, wonderful. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.